Cosmetic surgery is growing more popular worldwide. More than 87% of all plastic surgery is performed on women. And the number one is breast augmentation. So let's bust this wide open. Hey everybody, thank you for watching D News Today. I'm Trace. In the 1940s, Japanese prostitutes would inject paraffin or sponge into their breasts to increase their bust line. Then in 1962, the first silicone breast implantation was performed in Houston, Texas. Now it's been 50 years, and in 2013, there were more than 23 million surgical and non-surgical cosmetic procedures performed worldwide, and the most common, at 1.77 million, were breast implant surgeries. Breasts are a collection of fat, milk-producing lobules, lymph nodes, and connective tissues. No two are alike even on the same person. Breasts sit on top of pectoral muscles, over the ribs, and as you likely know, exist for breastfeeding infants, but have other social purposes as well. They're continually developing until age 22, and their size is both genetically and environmentally determined. Hormone or chemical exposure, diet, and genetics will all affect the size of the breasts. But in the end, some augment their breast tissue with a prosthetic implant thus a breast implant surgery. In the US, most implants are made of a contoured or round synthetic polymer called an elastomer. The sizes are measured in cubic centimeters, and each cup size of increase is usually 175 to 200 cc's of fluid. In 2012, 72% contained silicone and 28% contained a sterile saline solution, which is basically medical grade salt water. Silicone was banned by the FDA from 1992 until 2006 because of concerns over the implant rupturing, but after it was lifted, it's now come back into popularity. There are three different types of breast implant surgeries. Under the breast tissue alone, mostly under the pectoralis major muscle, and entirely under the pectoralis major muscle. The implant can be inserted through an incision around the areola, which limits scar tissue, the crease of the breast underneath, when the crease needs to be moved anyway, that's beneficial, through the armpit to avoid any breast scarring or damage overall, or even through the belly button all the way up underneath the breast. Once inserted, the implants are inflated with fluid, positioned, and then voila! It's a surgery, so it takes time for the body to heal afterward, and patients essentially have to do physical therapy during that healing process. The human body doesn't really enjoy having things inserted into it, so as it heals, the immune system will begin creating scar tissue around the implant. A new method for silicone implants from the UK uses a textured surface on the exterior of the implant, which mimics other surfaces in the body, hopefully minimizing scar tissue, though it's pretty much inevitable that some will form. Overall, if both the surgeon and the patient do their jobs properly, the breasts should look entirely natural post-operation. If not, capsular contracture can occur, which is when the scar tissue that the immune system creates causes a stiff, unnatural look. A good boob job is like a good wick. You don't notice the good ones. Though 1-2% to of implants do fail each year, breast implants shouldn't harm the body any more than other implanted medical prostheses. If they do rupture, the scar tissue surrounding the implant could keep it intact for a while. Saline can be absorbed by the body, and the FDA says silicone will not harm the body in any way, cause cancer, or damage tissue. Either way, surgery would be involved to remove any damaged implant or replace it. FYI, implants do not pop on airplanes, and they can't even be run over by a car. They've done it to test their durability. People undergo breast augmentation for a lot of different reasons. Post-mastectomy reconstruction, for example, congenital deformations, uneven breast development, post-breastfeeding collapse, or simply by choice because of their own positive body image, self-esteem, or confidence. It can also be because of gender reassignment surgery. In fact, the second most common plastic surgery in the world for men is breast reduction for gynecomastia. Men get breast augmentation too. Surgeons are trained to screen for body dysmorphic disorders in their patients, and they know that any procedure is part of a conversation. Studies have correlated breast augmentation electees to increases in suicide over 10 years, as well as self-esteem issues. But the bottom line, it's your body, so it's your choice. But what do you think? This is a big topic, and the number of people electing surgeries like this is growing all the time. So get down in the comments and discuss. You can also subscribe for more D News every day, and if you have a science question, make sure you tell us that down below. Thanks for watching.